I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and today I'm gonna to tell you all the secrets to keeping a large tarantula collection. Lately, there's been some people leaving comments down below my videos saying that I must be rich or something because I have so many tarantulas. When in fact, the exact opposite is true. I am not a wealthy guy. This is a collection that I accumulated over many years. Now, if I were to go out and buy all these enclosures and all these tarantulas at once, yeah, that would, that would be thousands of dollars. But when you add just a little bit at a time and slowly grow your collection, I mean, I got my first tarantula my freshman year of college. So if you're adding slowly over time, it's pretty easy to get to a collection like this. But I'm gonna let you in on the top 10 secrets of building and maintaining a large tarantula collection. Now the first tip is to start off slow. This is a journey, not a race. Get a few tarantulas that you really want and really get comfortable with them. Learn how to take care of them, how to rehouse them. Maybe raise a spiderling to an adult or at least a juvenile. Really get established in the hobby and, and become comfortable with all the different aspects. And when you start to feel comfortable and you think you're ready to expand your collection, do some research. Figure out exactly what species you really want and how exactly to take care of them. Make sure that you've already got enclosures lined up, you've got all of the necessary skills and different things that you may need to take care of those tarantulas. And then, and only then, should you really start thinking about placing an order. I mean, you gotta slow your roll or you're gonna get overwhelmed. Now this next secret is actually something I mentioned in my top 10 tips video, which I will link at the end, but it definitely bears repeating. And this really goes on the heels of the last secret, and that is not to buy one tarantula at a time. If you're ordering your tarantulas online, you're gonna be paying for overnight shipping, and that can get very costly and add up very quickly. And if you're wanting to build a large tarantula collection, you'll need to save money wherever you can. And the best place to start is to cut out unnecessary shipping. So once you've done your research and you've figured out which species you want to add to your collection start shopping around you know find one dealer that has all the species or at least most of them that you're looking for or save up until you're ready to go to a tarantula expo or a reptile expo where they'll be selling tarantulas the more money you spend on shipping the less money you have to spend on tarantulas and actually this doesn't even just apply to the tarantulas or scorpions I use this as well when I'm buying cork bark or enclosures or hides or substrate or anything like that I always try to buy in bulk I mean I'm gonna use it sooner or later. So I'll buy my cork bark in bulk. I'll buy my substrate in bulk or my water dishes. You know, if I just need one water dish, I don't go out to the pet store and just buy one. I'll buy five or 10 or however many they have. Cause I know eventually I'm gonna need them and I've got a closet or some space in the garage somewhere where I can store it until I need it. So maybe you're not always saving on shipping, but you're saving on time spent, running back and forth to the pet store, gas, you know, whatever. If you're saving time and you're saving gas, then you're saving some money. Now this next secret is pretty much common sense, but it actually flies in the face of our desire to add more tarantulas right away. The one thing I've learned the most from this hobby is patience. Now, just because I have the money to buy some tarantulas, I've done the research, I've got the enclosures, everything's ready to go, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best time to add more to my collection. One of the best secrets in this hobby is to wait for sales, special offers, or discount codes. Some tarantula dealers have Black Friday sales in November, so why buy tarantulas in September or October when you know they're gonna be greatly discounted at the end of November? Some dealers will do an end of year sale, or they'll have sales on different holidays like Valentine's Day or 4th of July. If you just do a little bit of research and maybe ask around some, people are gonna let you know when some of these larger dealers typically have some kind of annual sale. As long as it's not like six or nine months away, it would probably be a very good idea to wait till those tarantulas go on sale. Some dealers also have special offers like mystery boxes or buy one, get one deals or spend over four or $500 and get free shipping. There's also some very cool freebies that a lot of 
dealers will give away if you spend a certain amount of money, and there are a bunch of discount codes out there. In fact, if you go to my website, thetarantulacollective.com, you'll find a whole list of reputable tarantula and exotic pet dealers. And some of them even have discount codes that I have listed right there next to their link, where you can save 10 to 15% and sometimes even more. After a while, those discount codes really start adding up. Now this next secret is one that I use quite a bit, and that's buying things secondhand. A lot of the shelving and enclosures that you see in here, I bought them all secondhand. You can check Craigslist or Letgo or sometimes even eBay and find these Exoterra and Zoomed and Zilla enclosures that people have just laying around their house that are selling for like 10 or 20 bucks. Now the shelving that I use down here, you can find at Lowe's for like 50 bucks. But if you search around a little bit, inevitably you will find some auctions uh, for like a business, like especially a restaurant that's going out of business. Also grocery stores, some retail stores, and they'll have this shelving and they're almost giving it away at the auction. In fact, some of these shelves I bought for only like five bucks a piece. So keep an eye out for auctions or going out of business sales and don't pay full retail for shelving if you don't have to. Now I know that's not always an option. Maybe where you live, they just don't have auctions or recently nobody's been going out of business and you need some shelving pretty quickly. You don't have time to wait. Now this part of this secret is something I've never told anyone before, but I'm gonna tell you all today. In fact, it may be the best kept secret I have here in the tarantula hobby. Even if you have to go to a pet store or to Lowe's or somewhere like that, this is how you can get out of paying full retail. There are a lot of websites out there like cardcash.com, raise.com, gift card granny, where they sell gift cards to different retail stores at a fraction of the cost. So if I know I need an enclosure and they have it at PetSmart or Petco, I can figure out how much I'll be spending and go on one of those websites and inevitably I will find someone there that's trying to sell a gift card near that amount and I've only got to pay like 50, 60, maybe 70%. And it's not just pet stores. I, I do it for Lowe's, I do it for Target, Walmart, pretty much any national retail store has their gift cards being sold by third parties on one of these websites. And you can save a whole lot of money doing that. It takes a little extra time, but when you're saving 30 and 40%, I think it's totally worth it. But that's just our secret, okay? Don't be telling anybody else. Now this next secret isn't so much about saving money as it is saving time and saving peace of mind. It's all about keeping track of your collection. There's some very cool apps out there, like on, I know on Android, there's one called Exotic Keepers. I'm sure there are some for Apple, but I don't, I don't mess with Apple, so you gotta figure that out on your own. But even if you don't use an app, there's oh, you could use a ledger, you could use spreadsheets, just some method of keeping track of all your tarantulas that are in your collection, as well as when you last fed them, how often you need to feed them, the last time they molted, maybe when you got them, when you bred them, just keep track of all that information. It may seem like a little bit of work in the moment, but it's gonna save you a whole lot of work and a whole lot of stress later on down the line. Now, I'll be sure to leave links for everything I'm talking about down below in the description, so make sure you check that out. And another way it's helpful to keep track of all this information is when a tea mysteriously dies. If you know what temperature you were keeping it at, how often you were feeding it, when the last time it molted would be, you can take that information and use it to kind of figure out what may have happened. And in doing so, you're gonna make yourself a better tarantula keeper, you're gonna avoid making the same mistakes again, and you'll be able to share that information with other people and hopefully help them from making that mistake. And once you get above like 10 or 20 tarantulas, it's kind of hard to remember when exactly you got it, when it molted last, where you got it from, so having all that information somewhere that's stored away that you can access at any time really comes in handy. So keep track of your information. Now this secret ties in very nicely with the last secret, and that's to establish a routine. Have certain days set aside every week that are maybe cleaning days or feeding days. Know that this time and date is set aside every week to completing this task. Get into that habit and stick to it. If you know that Thursday nights are feeding nights, then you know don't schedule a party or make plans that evening. And if something comes up last minute, move that feeding day or maintenance day ahead one, not behind one. A lot of times, once you start pushing that off, you just keep pushing it off, and then it never ends up getting done. And then that throws your whole routine, your whole schedule out of whack, and you start running behind. So if for some reason you're not able to feed your tarantulas on the day you normally do, 
try to do it the day before. Don't kick the can further on down the road. Now sticking to a schedule does require some self-discipline. And I can speak from experience, I had no self-discipline before I started doing this. But it's really helped me out in life and I'm not just talking about keeping tarantulas. The self-discipline and sticking to a schedule, the routine, all of that stuff that I've learned here keeping tarantulas has crossed over into other areas of my life. And I've been able to exhibit self-discipline in areas of my life I never thought I'd be able to. So this secret doesn't just help you here in the hobby, it could help you in other aspects of life. But all the scheduling and routine is not gonna do you much good if you're in way over your head. So this secret is pretty much just don't bite off more than you can chew. It's really easy to fall in that trap of keeping up with the Joneses and you see this guy on Facebook has 50 tarantulas and then this guy over here has 70 and you're looking at your collection of like 20 and are thinking, I need to catch up with them. You don't need to do anything, especially that. The amount of tarantulas in your collection is not indicative of how good of a keeper you are. It is in no way a reflection of your experience or abilities. In fact, I think some of the people that I respect the most in the hobby are those that limit their collection to 10 or 20 tarantulas because they are honest with themselves and know they can't handle any more than that. We all have different lives and demands on our time and money. You may have kids and work 60, 70 hours a week and have a dozen other hobbies that you're interested in. And you can't devote all the time that would be needed to have a collection of 200 tarantulas. So getting that many tarantulas would be like way irresponsible. Now this next one isn't so much a secret as it is something I just don't think a lot of people take into consideration when they really start growing their collection. I would say that a large majority of us when we're growing a collection are buying spiderlings. And some of these spiderlings are only about an inch or less in size. They use very small enclosures that don't take up a whole lot of room. It's very easy to go from just a couple of tarantulas to 20 or 30 tarantulas. And then before you know it, maybe you've got 50 or you're pushing 100. And the majority of them are not more than a few years old, which at the time may not seem like a big deal because you can fit them all nice and neatly on one shelf. Like my collection here, it didn't start out like it is now. I had all of these on only like one or two shelves. And over time, it wasn't so much that I was adding more species, which I was, to be honest, but it was also that the species were growing and needed larger and larger enclosures. So I always had to keep in the back of my mind just how much space I would need if the tarantulas that I currently have were full grown. So just take a little bit of time, like today, assess what tarantulas you have, how large they're gonna get, and how large of an enclosure they're gonna need. Then do the math and kind of extrapolate. If everybody's full grown and they all need to be in five or 10 gallon style enclosures, how much space would that take up? And then figure out if you got that much space in your house. So I highly suggest you figure that out and use that information to decide when and how much to grow your collection. So be prepared for the future. I mean, that's, that's the big secret here. Now of all the secrets I've let you in on today, this one is the most important, and that is to take time to enjoy your collection. Stop and smell the roses, so to speak. Don't get so caught up in keeping up with me or some other dude online, and enjoy what you already have. The longer you're in the hobby, the more tarantulas and scorpions you'll end up accumulating. So just take a moment and enjoy what you have. Don't get caught up in that desire for more and not being settled until you reach the next stage. Just sit down around your tarantulas and relax, watch them walking around and webbing and drinking water. Enjoy the time you spend feeding them. Really be present when you're rehousing your tarantulas. For me, that's like the best exercise in mindfulness. I'm right there, I'm present, I'm totally involved and engaged with what's happening in the moment. Making sure that tarantula safely is being moved from one enclosure to the next. All the other worries and stresses of the world just kind of seem to fall away anytime that I'm feeding or rehousing my tarantulas. And I usually can get a taste of that by just watching the tarantulas do what tarantulas do. I mean, that's the whole point of keeping them, right? Is to enjoy it. So don't get so caught up in acquiring tarantulas that you forget to enjoy them. I mean, I've been guilty of it as well. There are times I've spent more time looking at pictures of tarantulas on Facebook and scrolling through websites that sell tarantulas instead of just coming right over here, just taking a few steps away from my computer, 
to my collection and spending some time really appreciating what I already have. So don't fall into that trap. That's gotta be the biggest secret in keeping tarantulas, is to enjoy the ones that you have. Well, if you want more tips on keeping tarantulas, check out this video right here. And if you wanna avoid some of the common mistakes in the tarantula hobby, check out this video right here. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. Cheers to all the haters, cause you proved to me yeah. that rising to the top was my destiny.